In this video, I'm going to answer some of your questions from my last video which explained how I lost 20 pounds on a vegan diet, eating more starches and decreasing my fat intake. I'm just going to be reading them from my computer, so that's why I'm looking down. What's the difference between plant-based vegan and other vegan diets? It's a really good question. I kind of touched on this in the last video. Plant-based vegan is kind of just saying that instead of having packaged and processed vegan foods that most of your meals are coming from fruits, vegetables, um, natural starches, whole foods. Do you have the same level of exercise as before you reduced your fat intake? Um, I actually probably exercise a little bit less right now just because I have moved and where I used to live there was this really long trail with lots of hills plus the stores were a little bit farther away so I walked all the time. I definitely walked more than I do right now um, and I still go to the gym, I still do the elliptical but probably not as much exercise as I was doing before but I think it just goes a little bit up and down depending on my life circumstance. Hi Melissa, I want to include more vegetarian dishes yet my family whom I cook for is pushing back against the idea. I mean this is a tricky one especially when you're so excited about something and trying to get other people on board um, and people have their favorite meals that they're used to so instead of completely changing what they eat like try substituting things so if, maybe if you have french fries try making your own sweet potato fries or um, try making like a really delicious vegan burger for them. Something like if they are used to having regular burgers, try just substituting one or two things at a time instead of completely stopping what they used to eat and making them have salads. Because I think that's what people are worried about when they think that they're going to be going vegetarian or vegan is that they can't have the delicious tastes that they're used to and that's really not true. You can still have your ketchup and your different sauces that you like on things which are usually what adds most of the flavor to the foods anyways. So try just doing one or two things at a time and slowly introducing it and good luck. Okay the next question is kind of similar. The hardest thing for me is making my food tasty because if I, for example, cook some quinoa and stew some vegetables, yes it's healthy, but I don't really like the taste. Do you have any favorite sauce recipes? And how do you sh make sure that your food tastes good as a complete dish? Um, so this is a great question. Again, sauces and things like that are a great way to do that. Um, I recommend nutritional yeast. It has, it's like this powdery flake kind of consistency and it's a natural vegan food. It tastes kind of cheesy so you can use it in the powder form um, or you can actually make different sauces. There's great recipes online. It's like a cheesy kind of um, really good sauce that you can put on all sorts of dishes. And spices. Spices are your best friend. Find flavors that you like. I really like dill. I like garlic spice, onion powder, um, I like the Bragg company, they have really great mixes of spices just to flavor your food and add different um, seasonings to it and experiment. That's going to be the best way to see what you really like because sometimes we just get used to eating the same things and then when you venture out to making new dishes, you're not really sure how to make it taste good. So I would just say keep trying new things, keep experimenting, combining different ingredients together, look online, try to find tasty recipes until you find something that you really love. How much fat do you eat in a day, a percentage? I don't know the percentage of fat, I don't really measure that. I have just eliminated eating meals that are mostly fat. I find that if I focus more on eating filling starches rather than not eating fats, that I'm full anyways, so I just stay away from the high fat foods and kind of just eat them in moderation. I don't really like to measure things to a detail. I don't think, for me personally, I just don't find that enjoyable. I don't want to weigh my food or, you know, I've never been a calorie counter who writes every single thing that you eat down. For me, that just wouldn't work long term. So I found a way that I can eat a lot of filling foods and be satisfied, enjoy the taste of the foods and not really have to think about it. What do you do for exercise? I love to walk. Walking is my ultimate favorite. Like power walk, walking in nature, 
Um, listening to audiobooks while I walk is really fun. And I love Kundalini yoga. Um, Kundalini has something called the breath of fire, and it's like a rapid um, pumping kind of breath that you do while you do different poses. And for me, it's one of the most energizing things. Like, I just feel so so alive, so vibrant when I do Kundalini Yoga. I do the DVDs by Anna and Ravi and I'll put the link down below to them. I absolutely love them. And what else do I do for exercise? I do, in my bedroom I'll do push-ups pretty much every day. I just like doing push-ups. Um, it really gives me a lot of energy as well. When I do like 20 push-ups and then I stand up, I feel like super energized. Like the blood just rushes to your brain and you get your blood gets super oxygenated or something, but it really wakes me up. And when I go to the gym, I like the elliptical and sometimes I'll do squats or some weights, but um, nothing too intense really. Okay, so this question here is saying about social situations and being weary of people's opinions such as family. Any advice for this? This is definitely a challenging one to be honest. This is something that still happens to me. Sometimes people just don't get it and they'll try to make jokes about it or you know, try to tell you why you shouldn't be a vegan or things like that. They just they don't get it or they're against it for some reason. Try not to take it too personally and just stay true to what you are doing, what you believe in. And that goes for anything in life, really. Like there Veganism is one example of it, but really anytime you make a choice for yourself that is different than what other people are currently doing, you take the risk of them pushing back against it or not understanding it or potentially judging it. And that's just something that you, I guess, have to get used to and have to be okay with and just know that you're doing something that you feel is a positive choice for yourself, for the environment, for animals, for so many things and you just gotta, I guess, be strong. I would love to hear from you what vegan foods you find most filling. Sweet potatoes and vegetables together, like I could eat that all day long. I just love it. I can add different spices every time. Sometimes I'll have it with ketchup and I just love sweet potatoes and veggies together. And also rice dishes with veggies and beans. There's so many different combinations that you can do and you can have different sauces with it and I just find those to be really filling. Also for a breakfast food, oatmeal is very filling as well. Okay, this is a really good question. It makes a lot of sense to me to be a high carb, low fat vegan. However, I struggle with accepting this concept because growing up, it was always taught that bread, pasta, potatoes, etc. are the foods that cause weight gain. For some reason, this concept is really ingrained in my head. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this. I totally agree. I remember when I was little, like some of my family members were on the Atkins diet and like just hearing about, you know, like, oh, I can't eat this, I can't eat that, I can't have pasta or potatoes. And I really remember hearing that as well. Um, I've never been on a diet like that. So, um, but I definitely understand that idea that people really believe that those foods are going to make them gain weight. I highly recommend watching some of Dr. McDougall's talks, also Dr. Neil Barnard and um, quite a few different uh, doctors out there. I'll, I can put some links down below for you. Um, and they really explain it in a way that makes a lot of sense. For example, people, different civilizations around the world have been living for thousands of years successfully on starch-based diets. You know, in Asia it was rice, um, in different parts of the world it was potatoes and millet and corn. Alright, I hope that this answered some of your questions. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.